All right, what's going on guys? Welcome everybody back to a brand new video on the channel. Hope everybody's having a good day. So in this one, we have an absolutely loaded video ahead of us. Today, we're gonna be discussing 100 tips and tricks so that you can learn everything in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Whether you've just picked up the game recently or you're gonna be getting it soon, these tips are gonna make your experience jumping in on day one significantly smoother so that you're already introduced to some of the mechanics. Now, this video did take a long time to make. All I ask in return if you guys enjoyed the video is to drop a thumbs up, that'd be awesome. And also, around 89% of my audience is not currently subscribed. So many brand new people have been finding the channel recently, and if that happens to be someone like yourself, make sure to subscribe if you are brand new. I would greatly appreciate it, and you won't miss any more Black Ops Cold War videos that I have on the channel. The support recently has been almost incomprehensible, so literally thank you everybody from the bottom of my heart. But without further ado, guys, let's talk about 100 tips and tricks to learn everything in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Number 100, as the very first thing you should do upon loading up the game, is go into your settings and familiarize yourself with the menu and set your sensitivity and button layouts and basically get comfortable in the game. Now, if you've played Call of Duty before, you pretty much know what settings you play on. However, if you are new to the game, experiment with your sensitivity and your button layout, whatever is most comfortable for you playing a first-person shooter. If you're not comfortable with your movement mechanics, then all of these other tips are going to be pretty much pointless because you need to have your fundamentals at least in place before employing any of these other tips. Number 99 only applies if you're playing on a next-gen console, but there is an option for trigger effects, which is the haptic feedback. Please disable this if you are playing with the triggers in game. It will help you out a lot. It's fine to have this on during like single player games or even the campaign, but for multiplayer, I would completely disable this as it will hurt your gameplay. We're going to get a lot of the menu stuff out of the way first, so bear with me. Number 98 is going to be to completely disable motion blur. Again, this is one of those things that will cause you to miss a lot of key info on the battlefield. It's fine to have on again during campaign probably, but in an MP experience in a competitive environment, it's not something you want to have on. Number 97 is going to change airborne mantle behavior to manual and then change the grounded to on second press. The reason why I'm adding this in is because this allows you to jump or jump near objects without auto mantling onto them. So you can jump shot or you can mantle based on your input. It's double tap to mantle and then obviously pressing the button once simply to jump. Number 96 is a pretty cool one that's almost unique to Cold War. You can go to your colorblind settings and completely customize every element of the HUD. There are a couple presets that are just the general colorblind settings, but you can also customize every aspect of these to your liking. You don't need to be necessarily colorblind to use these, but it does like help in terms of customizing just the look of it, or if you're having trouble seeing some of the certain prompts, or whatever the case is, it's nice just having this complete customizability and not being have to be stuck on the presets. So I recommend changing these to whatever you see fit. Number 95, one of the last things we're going to look in the menu is your FOV slider. This is a brand new addition to Cold War on all consoles, and you can change the FOV or how zoomed in your camera is going to be in relation to your gun. Now, do not play on max FOV, especially if you're not sitting extremely close to your TV or monitor. This is Call of Duty. We're not playing Quake. I recommend something about like 90 to 95, so typically a little bit higher than default, but not max FOV. The reason why not to max it out is because it's going to make enemies in front of you harder to see as silly as that sounds in essence the way it works the higher your fov the more peripheral vision you're going to get and be able to see on the sides of you but the smaller and seemingly farther away things in front of you will look so again i recommend about maybe 90 to 95 or maybe even 100 depending on your preference but somewhere around that ballpark 94 is going to make classes in your menu that cater towards all different kinds of play styles because the fact of the matter is in call of duty usually your go-to gun is not cut out for every situation and every single map depending on what your opponents are also playing so basically having a couple different variants like an smg rushing class or a little bit more of an ar anchor class just a whole bunch of different play styles that can you know survive really in any circumstances and you pick the one that is best suited to your opponents 93 is going to have good team streak composition. So a lot of teams that are coordinated will generally have everybody running UAVs as well. So you pretty much have constant eyes up in the air. This is hard to do with randoms as sometimes you never know what streaks they're going to be using, but also communicating when those streaks are to be used. You can pretty much have uh, the entire enemy team locked down so far as you have a UAV or a counter up at any given point in the match. 
72 is going to be to use the armor kill streak if you're trying to, you know, rank up weapons or maybe just go for good gun streaks because some kill streaks in the game like the chopper gunner don't exactly count towards any gun kills, but if you want to spend your time focusing on your primary weapon, then honestly the armor streak is not a bad idea. It gives you a little bit more HP generally in your first few gunfights and engagements, so it's very very helpful. 91 is going to be to take full advantage of your footstep audio. Not only yours, which we'll talk about later, but really paying attention to enemy footsteps. Now, there are some perks to counteract this in the game that can silence enemy footsteps, but if you have a, a, a decent headset or if you have your audio in a way where you can detect things like this, it is unbelievably important for context clues and where enemies might be around you. It's so important in Cold War. Number 90 is going to be need to use one of the best perks in the entire game, Forward Intel. So this pretty much makes your mini-map bigger, it, it covers more of a radius, and you're able to see a more comprehensive view of the battlefield. But the best part about it is, unless they change this or nerf it in any way, it actually gives you an indicator on the edge of your mini-map where enemies respawn at all. So as soon as they're back in the battlefield, it'll give you a little blip and a heads up about where exactly they are. And especially, this is insane in free-for-all game modes or TDMs where maybe the spawns aren't always super clear or predictable. It's an amazing perk and I highly recommend you run it. 89, as far as I can tell in this game, grenade indicators are always red. And the reason I'm bringing that up, in some previous Call of Duty games, if a grenade was not in your radius of damage, then it would go white, indicating that's not going to hurt you. Now it seems that the indicator is always red, despite whether it's in your damage radius or not. And you have to make that determination for yourself of whether you should move or reposition. 88 is going to be to get in the habit of crouching as soon as you hear a proxy mind. This is a field upgrade enemies can use that is basically a bouncing Betty and the easiest way to avoid it is to either crouch or prone and you can get into a habit of hearing the noise and then just reflexively crouching and that will keep you safe from it. 7 is going to be to use the stim shot slide combo in gunfights where you're severely disadvantaged. If you're taking on multiple enemies and you kill one but you're low HP the other one's going to push you. Stim shot is one of the things that can immediately turn around that gunfight and it's it's easily one of the most overpowered and, and amazing tacticals in the game. 86 is remember to use your wild cards when creating a class. A lot of people who are new to the game completely forget to do this, and they're very valuable. Some of the wild cards, for example, can allow you to attach more uh, attachments on your primary weapon, or you can pull multiple perks from a certain tier. It, they're really, really helpful. 85, assuming you haven't changed any of your aim assist settings, you're going to get a very significant slowdown when you're within the radius of your enemy. And the, and the reason this is important, in this game, it behaves a little different, and like sometimes your aim can get dry dragged elsewhere when you're trying to point at a certain enemy. So I pretty much recommend using your hip fire aim until you zero in on the target you want to shoot. It makes multiple engagements a little more difficult than previous games. Before, a really useful tip is to use ping to, you know, call out enemies that may have killed you. The ping will like basically track them through the wall as well, or you can double tap your ping to just indicate danger to a teammate that maybe you can't voice com with or just somebody to show their exact position. It's left on the D-pad on consoles and I believe Z on the keyboard to initiate pings. 83, while we're on the subject, use communication in any way you can manage, whether it's voice comms or just simple indicators of what you can use of your in-game mechanics. Any way that you can display information to your teammates and those around you is going to greatly improve your experience in the long run. 82, bullet velocity matters a little bit in Cold War, especially compared to Modern Warfare. When I made a tips video about that, bullet velocity meant almost nothing. However, it's quite noticeable in this game on SMGs, and it can make like the, the, the game and the gunplay feel a little wonky if you're playing a gun that has particularly slow bullet velocity. There are some attachments that you can look at will, that will increase it, but in my experience, bullet velocity still doesn't matter too much on any other weapon class like ARs and snipers and stuff, except for SMGs, and you can kind to feel the difference there so just keep that in mind 81 if you're sniping be sure to pair it with a shotgun secondary a lot of people forget that those are secondaries in the game they're no longer a primary weapon so instead of a pistol if you don't want to use that you can run like the spas 12 shotgun or even the Hauer alongside your good long-ranged weapon 80 you can use your audio cues and even visuals to spot out field mics they have a small little red dot above them when they're there and they do make a slight noise as well so you can sort of track them down that way and it's imperative that you immediately break them whenever you can you can either just hold 
square to break them or you can shoot them. Either way, very important to do. 79, the C4 equipment can be attached to vehicles that you can then drive either into an objective or a building where a lot of enemies are and then manually explode it. It sticks to virtually all surfaces in the game. 78, different to Modern Warfare, the laser sight does not actually reveal your position anymore. In, in MW 2019, the laser sight, depending on which one you're using, could actually be seen visibly by your enemies, but that is no longer the case in Cold War. You don't have to worry about it giving your position away, but it will, of course, increase your hip fire accuracy, which is nice. 77, in my opinion, muzzle flash concealment is not very important in this game, as there's other methods of getting revealed to by your enemies, right? Your name tag is going to appear above your head. The models are pretty easy to see in this game, so... If you're trying to hide yourself via your muzzle flash, then it's really going to be an effort and futility. It doesn't really matter if you ask me. 76 is going to be to use your minimap context clues, and this means any way possible, whether it's where your position is on the map as well as relative to your teammates, where the enemies are positioned, and pretty much like this is the telltale sign of a good player and somebody who's been playing for a long time, as they understand just based on looking at the minimap, they can infer what's going on in their match. 75 flinch is virtually non-existent in this game. It will indicate and show you visually that your screen is shaking, making it look like your gun is kicking around, but in reality, it will not move your aim point whatsoever. In 99% of situations, it is purely visual. 74 is developing good sound awareness, and this doesn't mean just footstep audio. This can mean a variety of things from equipment to reloads going in from your enemies and, and all sorts of things that your enemies will provide as far as audio context clues to pay attention to those as well as footsteps, obviously. 73, if you're playing against a very grenade Nade heavy team, the flak jacket trophy system combo for holding down objectives is a great call. It makes it almost impossible for them to get any devices around your area, and if the, you do have to get hit by a grenade, you usually won't die upon the first one if you do a flak jack. 72, if it's you throwing the grenades, however, you can jump as you're releasing it to get a little bit more distance and a, a little more juice behind it as well. 71 is to listen for reloads that your enemy is doing. It's very odd in this game how audibly you can hear your enemy's weapon reloading in close quarters. This, oftentimes, I will be able to outplay enemies just because they go behind a corner and they don't know if I'm going to push or not, so they choose to reload. And as soon as I hear that audio clip start playing, you know that they're pretty much vulnerable and you can take them out. 70, as opposed to previous Call of Duty games, headshots are actually pretty important as far as your time to kill. Now, there's a lot of specifics about how it works and the weapons you're using and everything, and we're not going to get into that, but just know that headshots are actually worth going for in Cold War. 69's killstreaks do not actually reset upon death. If you've played the alpha or beta, you'll know that, but if you haven't, you don't actually need to not die in order to get your killstreaks, and you you pretty much, the way it works, the higher killstreak you're on, the higher your score multiplier is going to be. So if you're capping objectives and getting a lot of kills without dying, then of course you're going to get your streaks faster, but they do not reset upon death. Because of the system, number 68, do not use all of your streaks at the end of a round. If you're playing something like Domination or whatever, where there's going to be split up a little bit, most people are going to tend to get their streaks near the end of a certain round, and it's very tempting to use them immediately, but sometimes it's better to hold off and wait till the next round. 67 is learning to single tap at longer distances. This is going to involve a lot of trigger discipline, and this is going to greatly benefit you on very long-range engagements where just full auto spraying really won't get the job done. You need to pull out a, f a few bullets that are just on target. 66 is going to be staying vigilant looking for sniper glint. If somebody's ADS with a sniper and specifically looking at you, you're going to be able to see that flash coming directly from their gun. So that is your indicator to either hide or get behind cover or maybe try to make the aggressive play if you can. 65, Peeker's Advantage is still a thing in Cold War, and I went into a pretty in-depth explanation in a Modern Warfare video, but it essentially is a baked-in part of every Call of Duty engine where you're going to have a little bit of frame advantage if you're the aggressor who's peeking someone else. The player who comes around the corner is going to be able to see the other player before the one who's stationary can see them. If you are interested in learning more about this, then just look up Peeker's Advantage in Call of Duty, and it will show you exactly how that works, but it is still in Cold War. The moral of the story is that being the aggressor is sometimes to your advantage. 64, remember that you can edit your custom class loadouts mid-match. In the older Call of Duty games, you would have to wait to go all the way back to the menu if you wanted to add like a new red dot or a suppressor on your gun. You can completely edit and adjust your classes mid-match. Obviously, the game is still going to be going, so you have to look out for that, but you can change anything you want mid-game. 63 is to know what surfaces can be shot through. Now, this basically works on weapon class now, where it's like LMGs and ARs will have better bullet penetration than weaker guns like pistols and SMGs. It's 
pretty much a flat rate now between all of these classes, but you, like just based on context clues, the materials like thin wood and stuff that can be shot through, even thin metal, and then like really difficult services like stone brick usually cannot be shot through. 62, taking advantage of another returning feature from Modern Warfare, you can reload while ADS'd in this game. So you can be holding a line of sight or an angle, and if you happen to be running low in bullets, you can reload and not even break that line of sight or that cover at all. 61, drop shotting using your hip fire is not a bad idea, but you have to be very specific when you do it during ADS. It's not a, a, a terrible solution in close quarter situations, but that leads nicely into tip number 60, which if you're going to be drop shotting a lot, there's attachments that literally make that possible. There are a drop shot tape that allows you to stay ADS while you're drop shotting. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to do it, and it's going to break your aim uh, if you do try to pull that off. 59, while playing hardpoint, it's useful to know the map rotations and where each hard point goes on each individual map you can go into a custom game and run hard point and just watch how they rotate and then you know once you memorize it then you're probably gonna win a lot more games than you otherwise would if you didn't know the rotations 58 melees do not one hit in this game unless you are using a knife now you can equip that as your secondary and knives will always be a one hit melee kill but you do hit with the butt of your gun and it'll deal a significant amount of damage but at a full enemy player it's not going to be enough to quite take them out so keep that in mind 57 however there are some attachments you can apply to your primary weapon that will increase your melee quickness and this will allow you to win more up close situations if you're having a melee battle with somebody who physically has a slower advantage in that you'll pretty much win those but again I, I wouldn't recommend investing all of your time into gun melee quickness because it's just a weird attribute that isn't very practical 56 if you're a player that likes making sure you always have ammo and equipment replenished you can use the scavenger perk to ensure you're always going to have an optimal amount of ammo and equipment as you'll be able to replenish upon every kill 55 is a general team composition tip when you're playing with your friends always have one person dedicated to taking out enemy kill streaks because there are bound to happen there's pretty much no way of preventing them they're going to get uavs or maybe even like chopper gunners or attack helicopters having one person just to snuff that stuff out as, as soon as possible is going to make your experience and especially against streak play way smoother 54 is taking advantage of all the slide techniques now the movement in cold war is absolutely amazing personally i think it's one of the best and we've ever had in a cod game it's so complex and intricate and there's a lot you can do with it you can get very creative in the way that you slide cancel or just use your movement so get get to experimenting and see what you, what you can come up with 53 pay attention to your kill cams and also like what setup they're using as you can use it as context clues and maybe potentially indicators on how to counterplay them you can see basically what perks and guns that they tend to run and you can make inferences from there on how you should go about handling the gunfight. 52 is kind of a weird one, but I'm honestly going to recommend if you're struggling to get attachments for your favorite gun in MP, you can literally go over to zombies and just shoot around for a bit with it and help unlock attachments. If you're doing it right and efficiently, you're going to lock attachments quite quickly and then you can bring them straight over to multiplayer. 51, when you're playing Armada specifically, you can just swim just under the surface of the water to almost completely avoid detection. In this game, it's really hard to see people that are underwater, let alone shoot them, and you can shoot pretty much with no restrictions from the water as well, so it's it's very, very good for concealment and trying to sneak your way around the map. 50, try to be aware of your weapon's drop-off range. Now, this is going to be different, again, for every weapon class. ARs are going to have a longer drop-off distance than, say, SMGs and vice versa. But, like, you want to know, generally, how far away or what distance your gun is going to be the most effective at so that you can try and position yourself to always be in the optimal scenario. That's impossible for every situation, but some attachments will extend that increased range as well. 49, also, this kind of goes off the last one, but take fights that you know you can handle and avoiding the ones that you can't like obviously if you have an smg and you're fighting somebody 70 or 80 meters you're probably not going to win the gunfight even though you might want to ego it out and just try to get the really long range kill you know deep down that you're probably going to lose that one and it'll just be better to reposition and so that's a big part of this game is learning what ranges you can handle and what you're cut out for and what you're not 38, make sure to use room callouts when trying to describe where enemies are to your teammates. Luckily, just above your minimap, whatever room you're in will be displayed just above you. So, for example, in operations or main floor. And you can use that to quickly convey to your teammates exactly where an enemy is and be very specific about it. So, it's a great thing to take advantage of. 47, jump shotting is actually extremely effective in this game. As drop shotting has been nerfed significantly, the jump shots, on the other hand, are arguably more effective than they've been in the past and is something that I strongly recommend you get in half 
habit of if you can. The way the aim assist works and just kind of how the Cold War mechanics are, if you can be really slippery in gunfights and sort of go left or right and, and throw off your enemy's aim, you're going to win a lot more fights than you otherwise would just heading straight on. 46, shooting under vehicles for enemies that tend to use those as cover a lot is actually really effective. I pick up so many kills on people that think they're safe, but they have a small like foot hitbox that is, uh, you know, appearing out from under a car or something and they don't realize it. It's extremely easy to do as well. 45, any engagements under 20 meters will be influenced by your hip fire aim assist as well. Now, most people know that while you're actually aimed down the sights, you get a little bit of assist during that, but a lot of players don't know that in close enough scenarios, your hip fire also gets assisted a little bit, so it's important to take advantage of that too. 44 is going to be picking up your teammates' trades. If you usually roll with another teammate as you go throughout the map, if they happen to get picked off or you do, usually you'll be able to trade bullets back and forth in a gunfight and your enemy is, you know, maybe very low health or at least half and then the other teammate can go and push that and finish it off making sure that the teammate's death was not for nothing 43 is a tip if you're playing fire team dirty bomb while you're downed if your teammate is reviving you have them prone out behind you and use yourself as a bit of a body shield while they're rezzing so you can take a little bit of extra bullets to a careless enemy and then potentially you both will be able to get up and then turn that gunfight around on them 42, flashing red target indicators on your map means that the enemy is currently firing their weapon. And this is important to use as general game awareness as you can know how many bullets roughly they might have left in their weapon and whether or not it would be safe to push them based on how many bullets they've already let off. 41 is going to be to pretty much always pick up another weapon while you're on the battlefield. There's almost no reason not to replace your secondary unless you're keeping it for a specific reason like camos or ranking it up. But having a second primary just from either your teammate or an enemy that you've taken out is always beneficial and there's it takes like one second there's virtually no reason not to carry another 40 is going to be to try and cut down horizontal recoil on your weapons using attachments as much as you can obviously you want to cut down vertical at the same time but vertical is a little bit easier to control recoil especially on the sticks on a controller than it is horizontal recoil you can pull down to pretty much compensate for vertical quite nicely if you get used to it but horizontal recoil is significantly harder to manually compensate for so using attachments to help out in that regard is good and then leaving the vertical up to your actual in-game mechanic. 39, you can use the combination of smoke grenades and a thermal sight on your weapon to be able to spot enemies that physically won't be able to see you. This is an old tried and true trick in pretty much every Call of Duty game. It still works in Black Ops Cold War and there is a certain section of people that enjoy playing that way. So just as a confirmation, the thermal smoke combination does work in Cold War. 38, if you're using the artillery strike kill streak, you don't need to use all of them at once. You can actually save your unused strikes for another time. So for example, you can bomb a domination point once and then the, te uh, the enemy team will think it's safe to go and jump on again. And then you can use the rest of your strikes to, you know, destroy and take out a over aggressive enemy. 37 is going to be to pay attention to health meters, not only on your teammates, but certainly your enemies. Now, you can take off HP bars in your option, and I've seen some people playing multiplayer like that as it's more like classic Call of Duty, although in this game, I just think it's really helpful to know exactly how much HP your enemy might have. That knowledge and the quick time decision making power that it gives you is oftentimes the difference between winning and losing a gunfight. 36, you can get up ladders slightly quicker by jumping and meleeing into them as you grab the ladder. You'll start about halfway up, and that will give you a little bit of an advantage than to just grabbing onto it normally. And while the difference isn't huge, it was certainly bigger in previous Call of Duty titles, it still is somewhat effective in Black Ops Cold War, and is just like a nice little technique that you should employ. 35 is remembering which perks keep you off the radar for streaks and which ones are going to keep you off the minimap. Now, both are vitally important for different scenarios. If a team is very UAV heavy and they seem to be spotting out that way, then of course you're going to want to stay off the radar. Similarly, if a team is using like chopper gunners and attack helicopters and you're getting shredded up by that, consider using the perk that'll keep you away from streak radar. 34, speaking of perks, you can also use ninja to very heavily conceal your footsteps. Now, running that perk is not going to make your footsteps totally inaudible although in most situations and for all intents and purposes you may as well be completely silent this is especially useful if you tend to play a bit more aggressive and you need to be able to navigate the map quickly without being detected this is probably the most important tool that a player like that can take advantage of 33 crouch walking doesn't actually decrease the volume of your footsteps but it makes the sounds themselves more infrequent meaning your enemy has less of a chance to detect or pick up on the audio that 
that you do happen to be making. So this means in practical terms, there's almost no reason to crouch walk if you're trying to sneak around walking or even regular sprinting. If you have ninja, will pretty much get the same job done, but there are some cases, very specific scenarios in which crouch walking is going to be better. 32, there's a very weird mechanic in this game that is not exactly aim punch, but it can sometimes feel like it or change your positioning. Your character actually moves based on the bullets that you take. So if you're standing still and you get hit by a low powered weapon, you're not going to move very much like a pistol, but it will push you back a little bit. A more high powered weapon like a sniper rifle will actually push your character back a lot. So if you're holding an angle and you get hit by a sniper, but don't die, you might want to consider repositioning as you may be a little bit farther back than you intended. 31, just like Modern Warfare, all operators are entirely cosmetic. I think most people know this, but again, like similarly to the game, I think that there are some operators that kind of perform better under different lighting and visual circumstances. There's just some operators that I believe are camoed better and ones that stick out like a sore thumb. If you want to get really sweaty, you can change your operator based on the individual map you're playing every single game. I really wouldn't recommend it. It's not going to benefit you that much and it'd just be going entirely out of your way, but it is an option if you so happen to want to do that. 30, I found it's generally best to shoot vehicles from a point of elevation. This not only gives you more ample time just to put out damage on the vehicle if you're trying to blow it up and if you have an attachment for that, but it also gives you a better view on the where the driver is and probably just a more generous hitbox on taking out the driver itself. You don't only have to worry about the rest of the vehicle. 29, if you happen to be sniping or quickscoping, remember every time you shoot to steady out your weapon. This is especially effective with quickscoping as you can initiate the steady immediately and your aim is going to be a lot more on point than it otherwise is and the sway is going to be pretty much non-existent. This is the most fundamental muscle memory if you want to be an effective sniper in Call of Duty is to immediately steady out your weapon every time you scope in or are about to take a shot. It's going to help you out immensely. 28 is going to be to get familiar with the maps. Now, especially for you first-time players who don't know the Cold War maps yet, I recommend jumping into each individual map at least once with bots just to get a general feel for how they all play. You're going to learn a lot more just through hours played with real matches, but it's not a bad idea to jump in with bots first and just get a visual indicator on how the maps play. 27 is going to be paying attention to character audio quotes. Now, obviously, the announcer that tells you what's going on, whether killstreaks are being called in or if an enemy is on an objective, but also teammate character quotes where sometimes the operators will call out where an enemy might be like behind a certain piece of cover or something and listening to little things like that can actually save your life. 26, if there's a lot of debris and smoke and you can't quite see your enemy but you see their name and health bar, shoot just directly under the middle of the bar and you should be hitting your enemy's hitbox. If you try to shoot directly under the red dot, you're, you're more than likely going to miss as it's skewed all the way to the left, so you pretty much want to shoot just under the name or health bar. 25, as far as I can tell right now, holding a lighter gun out is actually going to increase your movement speed. This has been a thing in previous Call of Duty games. You're going to move faster with a knife out than you would, let's say, an LMG, and that seems to be the case in Cold War, so that's another useful tip for getting to an objective faster or something if you want to rush a point and get there. Set up before your enemies. That's very crucial to know. 24, when picking a reticle color for your red dot or any sort of optic you're using, make sure to use a color and a pattern that doesn't get lost in the background very easily easily. Some colors just kind of blend in with your environment and aren't very good. I really don't recommend anything like dark greens or, or something like that, especially on maps that have a lot of trees and shrubbery. It's going to get lost quite easily and it's going to make it harder to track enemies. So anything like bright pink or sometimes bright blues or reds are usually the best option. Blue is only a problem if you're going to be aiming up and it sometimes gets, you know, blended in with either water or the sky. So that's not always the best option, but the point is to have a reticle that stands out against any background at all. 20 23 is getting used to long range spraying with a high powered scope on an AR, especially if you alternate between full auto firing and single tapping depending on the distance. There also is an entirely separate sensitivity setting for these high powered scopes that if your shot seems to be a little bit off and you don't know why on a lot of these higher powered magnifications, then consider looking into that sensitivity change and then building your muscle memory on it from there. 22 is going to be remembering that different modes have different spawn algorithms. Now, by no means am I an expert on Call of Duty spawns or anything like that, but I have a basic understanding about how different modes work. Like, for example, with Domination, if you are have two flags captured, your enemy is going to spawn around their home flag, more or less. But in something like Hardpoint, where the 
enemies are going to spawn more or less out on the side of the objective wherever it spawns in that's just like important things to keep in mind where tdm the enemy will basically spawn wherever you and your teammates are not and it's more somewhat random in that fact but if you want you can go down the rabbit hole and do a lot of research about how respawns work in different modes but i'm not an expert on that i just know that they are different depending on what you're playing 21 is remembering that your kill streaks do not re-roll unless you die so in previous call of duty titles you could get all three of your kill streaks in one life if you happen to just go on a complete and utter shutdown you can get like multiple v sats for example in black ops 2 if you just kept going you cannot do that in this game however so if your only objective is to keep getting streaks then you need to die basically as soon as you get your third and final one in order to restart that process. 20. Interestingly enough, with kill streaks, as most of them aren't going to count towards your actual, you know, kill streak counter, the war machine, weirdly enough, does. So if you're going for like a nuclear or something, you can use the war machine to pick up a majority of your kills or at least a lot of easy ones, and it's still going to continue to count towards those medals. I don't know if this is intended or if it's a glitch and they're going to change that in future updates, but that is currently how the build is. 19 vehicles that are being driven by your enemy will be tagged on the minimap so you can see its exact relative position you can tell if they get out of the vehicle so that you can go and take them out if they're vulnerable you can even shoot them completely off the vehicle and then that will nullify it but you can know specifically where the positioning is just by paying attention to your minimap and then conveying that information to your teammates as well 18 right now i don't believe armor hit markers when shooting an enemy have a break point or that's not visually displayed you know in warzone when you break somebody's armor it literally tells you through visual and audio cues. I don't think armor actually has a breaking sound or visual cue point in this game yet. You just kind of shoot armor and then sometimes it doesn't come up if the armor's broken. Unless they've changed that already, it's just best to assume that your enemy still has armor if you get that hit marker at least one time. 17, the friendly map indicators of when your teammate dies are very precise and accurate. And the reason I'm bringing these up specifically is it's going to help a lot with map context clues, knowing exactly where your teammate died to a T is like so good for inferring where your enemy might be and you know basically what they might be using. It seems like such a minor and mundane detail but I promise it's a lot more effective than it seems. 16 if the enemy killstreak pressure is just getting way too high consider having you or somebody on your team using the air patrol score streak. This basically wipes out anything that is currently in the air. Different air patrols can fight each other so if an enemy also has one out then they kind of battle it out but using this to completely counter streaks is a lot more efficient than shooting them down with launchers albeit you do have to obtain that streak to begin with but again it's uh it's very useful for shutting that kind of aggressive play down 15 there are certain maps with mounted turrets and windows and if your enemy is using that you pretty much can just spray just above the turret and the headshot hitbox is always there it's very vulnerable position keep that in mind when you're on the turret as well it's like if you know where you're shooting they can be taken out quite quickly shoot literally just above of the gun and the headshot hitbox is always right there. It also discourages people from relying on the turret too much and you know makes them employ different strategies which then you can go and counterplay. 14 if you're being shot at from an angle you don't really know where from. A lot of the guns in this game have like kind of tracer rounds it's not exactly tracers but you can pretty much see exactly where the bullet pathing is and then lead that all the way back to where the shooter is and pretty pretty much in every Call of Duty game this has never been the case bullets have more or less been invisible however in Cold War and a lot of situations and if you're paying enough attention you can see physically where the bullets are being traced back to looking at the path and then bring that immediately to the shooter 13 crouching will affect your spray a little bit and make it slightly less recoil but proning out will almost entirely negate the recoil and it's not always practical or good to be just laid out prone it gives you very few options on what else you can do but remembering to get in the habit of crouching when spraying at a long distance will make your range a lot more accurate 12 bullets come from your head in this game and not necessarily from your gun and the reason this is important some games have it realistic where if your weapon's barrel is pointed towards an object but your red dot is on an enemy your bullets are not going to reach a target and you know it's it's a more realistic in that way but in in call of duty as long as your red dot is on the enemy it doesn't matter if your gun's barrel is obstructed by a piece of cover or something you will hit the target because again the bullets technically come from your head that's just how cod's always been built this allows for some pretty nasty head glitches and why some enemies are able to just completely beam you and the only thing you can see is the the cut you know what i'm saying the, the only thing you can see is the top of their head.
11, there are visual indicators that you can count how many enemies you stunned as you will get individual messages for how many you tag up. So let's say if there's a room, hypothetically, you throw a stun in there, but you're not sure how many you hit in previous Call of Duty games, you would just get a hit marker and then it's kind of up to you to guess. You'll actually get a full confirmation on how many individual enemies you hit with that stun. So it's important to also count those as you're playing. Number 10, after a lot of playtime, you can probably start to recognize weapon sounds just by hearing them. So you could determine the difference between a suppressed version of a weapon and also a base version, whether your teammate or enemy is using it. And this is just, again, good for general game awareness, which you need to build up if you want to be good in Black Ops Cold War. But you can spend time trying to learn the different gun sounds if you want, or just, you know, pay a heightened sense of attention to them. Nine is to pay attention to your weapon's gun statistics on the bars, and while these indicators are little bit arbitrary and all of the information maybe isn't clear on what it does for your weapon there are some more in-depth like analysis you can go into what each individual attachment or attribute does but other than that i mean just generally pay attention to the strengths and weaknesses of your weapon and how attachments might be influencing them Number eight is going to be not to autopilot, and what I mean by this is sometimes you get into a habit when you play Call of Duty where you kind of just spawn into the map and, and run around and just shoot things, but you're not actually there, you know, mentally, you're not paying attention to what's going on around you, and you're not using nearly as much of your skill and making good decisions as you could, you're kind of just mindlessly playing, and we all do that, like we all autopilot from time to time, especially when matches get dull or boring, that happens, but if you want to be performing at your best, you need to get into a habit of recognizing when you're sort of auto piloting and just playing mindlessly and then getting back focused in your match again number seven i found it's best that when you get stunned in this game literally just prone out and then grab a corner and then maybe spray your weapon if you have to stuns are pretty brutal in this game if you're not running attack mask if you seem to be getting stunned a lot and you don't know what to do about it consider running the attack mask but other than that i found that's a pretty good way to counterplay them as it's going to force your enemy's hand to you know make a position or to make make a bad play this however allows you to buy as much time as possible to get back on your feet and back in the action. Number six is going to be regarding crossplay. Now, this isn't technically like an in game tip for Cold War, but this is like if you're playing on console and let's say you're brand new to Call of Duty, if you're playing up and queuing against PC players all the time, as you can tell what they're playing on and your pre game screen, then this might be a little bit more of a painful experience than it otherwise should be. You can disable crossplay in your settings, which I don't know if I always recommend. I think it's less healthy for matchmaking, but at the same time, you're guaranteed to play with people that are on your same console and playing by the same rules. I think it's at least useful to know that this is an option if it becomes somewhat of an issue for you. Tip number five, in your settings, if you want, you can enable sprint to cancel reload. So in like very old Call of Duty titles, if you would queue up a sprint, it would cancel your current reload. You can do that in Cold War, or you can choose to sprint while reloading. If you still want to reload cancel and don't want to disable that option, you can simply double tap your swap weapon buttons to cancel the reload animation or skip it entirely. Number four is going to be to play patient. Now, similarly to Modern Warfare as well, this game really rewards patience and discourages a lot of movement and rushing for the most part you can still be very effective you know playing a more aggressive play style but i would say in a lot of ways even compared to other trailer games this game greatly rewards you actually slowing down and, and thinking about your decisions much more methodical play style might actually serve you better than straight up rushing every single time as much fun as that might be and how that might be your preferred way of playing the game it definitely does reward patience number three is an extremely fundamental tip but working on your crosshair placement and especially in a twitch suitor like call of duty where you know the time to kill is so fast that milliseconds can often be the determining factor between a gunfight it's pretty much whoever sees each other first in call of duty in a lot of ways will be the victor of that gunfight so good crosshair placement is absolutely key and this is going to depend a lot on your map knowledge of where the angles are but keeping it up in almost all circumstances and at like headshot horizontal level making your aim go back and forth on a horizontal plane rather than a vertical will just help you shoot a lot straighter. Tip number two is going to be all around getting very fluid with your movement. Now, this is a tip that I cannot recommend enough. I think it's one of the core elements to just being not only good at Call of Duty, but just good at video games of whatever movement system they have implemented. If you can get a point where you master it and you're completely comfortable in your own shoes, so to speak, then there is absolutely nothing holding you back from absolutely dominating in the game. This starts with getting your settings right, you know, however you want to do 
designing them, but then also just going in and practicing about it. You're not going to get good at movement until you spend a lot of hours in game implementing that and seeing what sort of systems work and what doesn't. It's a long process of trial and error, but once you get good at your movement, then you're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Finally, coming in at tip number one, the best thing that's going to separate you and make you a good player is having really outstanding overall game awareness. Now, there are so many attributes that plays into it that nobody is completely perfect at this, but some individual components that you can integrate into your playstyle are things like paying attention to the kill feed, watching the minimap every so often, and knowing when to peek at it and when not, knowing exactly when to use your equipment and how many enemies might be approaching you. Using any and all audio indicators as plentiful as they are is also crucial in keeping you alive. There's so many little nuances in game awareness that will make and separate a good player from an average player that if you just pay like a little bit of more attention than you're used to, it's going to improve your gameplay so dramatically. And I would say that this tip is probably the number one thing that newer players are going to want to work on. If you've been playing Call of Duty for a long time, odds are your game awareness is probably pretty high or at least higher than average. And this tip is, you know, less applicable to you, but especially to newer guys to the COD scene, like learning game awareness and, and developing that sense takes a lot of time and a little bit of dedication, but you can get there and you're going to see marked drastic differences in your gameplay. Beyond just raw aim and general like video game skill, that is the number one thing that will separate you. And I would, I would feel like most every Call of Duty player would more or less agree with that. But anyways, guys, that is going to be 100 tips and tricks to learn everything in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. This video did take a really long time to make, and I truly want to thank you if you made it all the way to the very end. If you are currently listening to this and you watched through the whole video, leave your favorite emoji down below in the comment section so that I know you made it through this entire 40 minute video. But this was uh, a project that I really wanted to make and help a lot of people that are new to the Call of Duty scene now. And hopefully that you learned something from this video. If you did, all I ask in return is a thumbs up before you go. Subscribe if you're brand new to the channel so you don't miss any more videos like this. It would be awesome. And I do stream almost every day over on Twitch. And if you want to go follow that and come say hi, my link to that will be down below in the description. But other than that, hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you all on the next stream or the next video. Take it easy. I got to go guys and peace out.